Now, you mean that he lost hope because of the leaders of the church, right? Okay, now I'm speaking to you as leaders of churches here. That I pray that you will be giving hope to people. Now, his question is how about if the leaders is not giving hope? Now, for this, for to handle any problem, I want to say that two elements, this right now, two elements. First, how can we avoid being avo affected by this negative influence? How we can how we can keep our joy when we see the difficulty. Aha, ya kwanza ni kwamba basi tunaweza kufanya namna gani ili tusije tuka tukakuwa tukaadhirika na maneno kinyume yanayotokana na hawa viongozi. So the first thing is how I can be still be joyful and peaceful when something not so good is happening. Aha, basi ni kwamba basi nitakuwa vipi ijapokuwa wanaongea maneno kinyume na mimi nitaendelea vipi kuishi maisha yangu ya furaha and then the second part is how do i handle this problem na cha pili ni kwamba basi nitashughulikia vipi tatizo hili okay now the first part how can i not to be affected by this problem ya kwanza ambapo basi nita nitafanya namna gani ili kwamba nisije nikaadhiriwa na maneno kinyume hawa watu when i see some problems in the church ninapoona matatizo kanisani how can i keep the peace and the love of god nitaweza kufanya namna gani ili amani na upendo wa bwana ukaendelee kudumu kanisani so the first part is how do we handle this believing that god has the churches in his hand Kitu cha kwanza ni lazima uamini kwamba Mungu anayo makanisa yote kwenye viganja vyake. It's true that each church has this problem. Ni ukweli kwamba kila kanisa haliwezi likakoswa matatizo. We cannot take away all the problems. Na hatuwezi tukaondoa matatizo yote yaliyopo kanisani. But the first thing I believe is if I trust in God's love and follow him, lakini cha kwanza cha kwanza ni kwamba ninapoamini upendo wa Mungu na nimfuate Mungu. God will be able to strengthen me and give me joy and peace. Mungu atanijaza nguvu na anipe furaha na amani. Even if there are difficulties in the church. Ijapokuwa kuna ugumu kanisani. I can still rejoice even when there are difficulties in the church. Ninaweza tu kuendelea kudumu katika furaha ijapokuwa kuna matatizo kanisani. Can you agree with me? Hapo mtunakubaliana that we can rejoice in the Lord even when there are difficulties in the church. Ya kwamba wewe kama umemwamini Mungu na unamfuata Mungu ijapokuwa kuna shida na matatizo kanisani wewe unaweza kuendelea kuishi maisha ya furaha kwa sababu umejazwa na nguvu za Mungu because if i have the joy and the love of god then my life can show the glory of god kwa sababu kama ninayo furaha na amani ya Bwana na maana kwamba maisha yangu yote yataonyesha utukufu wa Mungu i can be strengthened by god ninaweza kutiwa nguvu na Mungu i can affect the church slowly na sasa kwa sababu nimetiwa nguvu na Mungu katika njia pole pole nitaweza kuathiri kanisa langu even if i cannot change a whole church at least my life can change some people ijapokuwa siwezi kubadilisha kanisa lote jima lakini kuna baadhi ya watu ambao watabadilishwa wachache so i choose not to be affected by people kwa hivyo mimi ninaamua kwamba watu sitaadhiriwa na mambo kinyume ya watu so that i won't be complaining about a church ili kwamba sitakuwa mtu wa kulalamika kila wakati kuhusu kanisa so that i won't lose strength ili kwamba nisije nikapoteza nguvu and many christians facing this problem they lose strength they lose hope Watu wengi ambao wanakumbana matatizo haya wanapoteza nguvu na tumaini. But we know that God is victory in everything. Lakini tunajua kwamba Mungu ni mshindi juu ya kila jambo. Okay? And then the second one, how to help this person? Sehemu ya pili ya kusaidia mtu huyu. Now, this problem has a source, a different source. Utaweza kupata shida yoyote inayopatikana kanisani lazima kuna chanzo chake. Someone in the church is not giving hope to the people. Ina maana kwamba kuna mtu kanisani ambaye yeye hawapi watu tumaini. So that part there is no one set way to solve the problem. 
Kwa hivyo basi hakuna njia ambayo ni ya kipekee tu ya kusuluhisha tatizo hili. We have to ask God for wisdom. Ni lazima tumuombe Mungu atupe hekima. How can I talk to the leader of the church? Nitazungumza vipi na viongozi wa kanisa? Now in some situations, katika hali zingine, it might be not wise to talk to the leader about this problem. Katika njia zingine yawezekana sio vyema kuzungumze na viongozi wa kanisa juu ya hilo tatizo. We need to discern. Ni lazima tuwe na roho ya upambanuzi. Does this pastor listen to people? Uelewe kwamba je, huyu mchungaji huwa anasikiliza watu akiongea? If he doesn't listen, kama huyu mchungaji sio wa kusikiliza maongezi ya watu, if I talk to him it can cause more problem. Na unasema kwamba basi kama nitamwendea nimueleze hili tatizo litasababisha matatizo mengi zaidi. So how can I strengthen this brother and say, well, even though you face this difficulty, but God give you hope. Just give him the Bible passages of hope. Kile unaweza kufanya kwa sababu umekwisha kujua kwamba nikimwambia huyu mchungaji mambo yatakuwa mabaya zaidi. Muendee huyu mtu na uanze kumpa mistari ya kibiblia inayojenga matumaini. And guide him to be changed by God. Na ukaweze kumuelekeza aweze kubadilishwa na Mungu. The wisdom this to discern is very important. Hekima ya kupambanua mambo ni hekima ya muhimu zaidi. There are people who listen to other people's opinion. Kuna watu ambao wanasikiliza maamuzi ya watu wengine. There are people who don't listen to others. Na kuna wengine ambao hawasikilizi maongezi ya mtu yeyote. I hope we all learn to listen to people's opinion. Ninaomba kwamba tupate kuwa viongozi ambao tunaweza kusikiliza maongezi ya watu wengine. I hope we all will say I'm perfect. No but now everyone every suggestion is wrong. Tunaomba tusiwe wa viongozi ambao tunasema kwamba ambao wewe sababu wewe ndiye mchungaji lenye umesema ndilo sawa na mengine ambayo watu wengi wanazungumza hayafai. But it's true that there are some people who just don't want to listen to people. Kwa kweli kuna watu ambao wao hawako tayari kusikiliza kitu kwa watu. Then we have to ask us for some how to handle the problem. Kwa hivyo inafaa basi sisi tukapate kuomba Mungu atupe hekima ya kushughulika na watu kama hao. So what we can do is just to strengthen the brother. Kile unaweza tu kufanya ni kumuhimiza yule ndugu aliyeshushwa roho. Now if the pastor's problem is very very serious, na kama basi tatizo hili kuhusu mchungaji limekuwa tatizo ambalo lime, limeweka uh, mizizi kabisa, then I will say ask God how to handle it. Anasema kwamba basi yeye atamuomba Mungu ampe mwelekeo jinsi ya kushughulikia. Sometimes God tell people to stay and to affect the pastor gradually wakati mwingine Mungu amekutaka uwe hapo ili kwamba ukapate kumbadilisha huyo mchungaji pole pole sometimes God will tell people you have to leave the church na wakati mwingine Mungu anasema kwamba hapo penye upo haufai hebu utoke kwenye hilo kanisa i'm not telling you to leave the church sisemi kwamba sasa muende muondoe watu waondoke kwenye makanisa i'm saying ask God for direction nasema kwamba umuombe Mungu akupe mwelekeo and uh, The most important is that pastors who really listen to God and listen to the people to to minister to people with humility and gentleness. Cha muhimu ni kwamba wewe kama kiongozi uwe mtu wa kusikia sauti ya Mungu na pia usikie sauti ya watu ambao unawaongoza na unawahudumia wale watu katika unyenyekevu na upole kulingana na mahusia ya Mungu. Amen. Hapa tunafikia nafasi ya sema huduma ni kutia watu moyo he said that uh, he is still on the question that ministry is to give people hopes natumaini yeah. oh, sasa ulize yangu kusema hata kwa maombi kuna nafasi sasa alisema hii moyo inahitajika tu kufunga na kuomba he said that there is a, a verse the bible where jesus said that we have some things that needs fasting and prayers sasa ulizo ni kuna nafasi nyingine niko natia ile tumaini lakini nafikia kuna nafasi nasema kuna nyingine nasema kukaribia na kukemea. Sasa si tuwe nafanya nini? Aha, there is also a scripture which says that some other things you have to rebuke them. So help you to understand that sense. Sasa nikikuta mtu sana na ule sijue. Okay. There are times that we need to rebuke. Kuna wakati ambapo tunahitaji tukemee. But to rebuke there is a, you know, the rebuking that is giving direction and hope and there is a rebuking that is tearing down people 
kuna kule kukemea ambako kuna wajenga watu kuna wapa tumaini na pia kuna kule kukemea pengine ambako kuna wafanya watu wasonge bali zaidi whenever we see their problems of people tunapoona matatizo ya watu i think it's best always to tell them your life is precious ni vyema kuambia wale watu ijapo kuwa wanayo matatizo uwaimize waambie kwamba maisha yao ni ya zamani zaidi god loves you ya kwamba Mungu anawapenda. And he wants to make the best of your life. Na Mungu anataka maisha yao yakuwe mazuri zaidi. And I've heard some behavior of yours. I've heard some behaviors of yours. Nitapokuwa nimesikiliza basi eh, tabia zako zile zingine mbaya. Can you tell me why you did it? Hebu naomba tu kwa unyenyekevu na upole uniambie shida ilikuwa nini ndio ukatenda hivi? Can you tell me how the people would feel when you do do that? Hebu basi naomba uniambie watu wako unaoongoza ama watu hata wa familia yako watahisi namna gani wakisikia umetenda tendo kama hiyo. So you said I'm accusing I'm asking questions. Badala basi ya kuwakemea na kuuliza uliza maswali to guide the person to think. Ni lazima basi ukamwelekeza huyo mtu aanze kufikiria and to repent. Na aanze kufikiria katika njia inayomwelekeza katika toba. If the person repents, kama mtu atatubu, then I will say, "Great brother, utamwambia ha, umefanya vyema kabisa." It's wonderful that you see this problem. Ni ajabu kwa kweli umeona tatizo hili. And you want to repent and turn away na, from the old way. Na uko tayari kutubu na kugeuka kutoka kwenye njia zote mbaya. I appreciate your humility. Ninashukuru sana unyekevu wako. Let's think about how we can change. Hebu sasa tukaanze kufikiria jinsi tunavyoweza kubadilika. How we can correct the situation. Tunaweza kutengeneza namna gani hali ikawa nzuri tena. Okay? Now there are people who don't want to listen. Na kuna watu ilapo kuwa umetenda makosa hawataki hata kusikiliza. Who continue to sin? Wao watu wataendelea tu na dhambi zao. There are two ways to approach it. Kuna njia mbili ambazo tunaweza kushughulikia. The heavy way and the gentle way. Kuna njia ambayo ina uzito na kuna njia ambayo ni ya upole. The heavy way would be like this. Njia ya uzito itakuwa hii. Get out this church. Hebu sasa uondoke kwenye kanisa hili. You go to hell. Wewe utaenda jela. You have no hope. Wewe hauna tumaini. Now. You know, it, some people would do that. Watu wengine japo kwa watafanya hivyo. But when we have to give warning, lakini kama inafaa basi tupeane eh we can say like this. It, kama inabidi kwamba tupeane tupeane msomo tunaweza kufanya namna hii. And I heard this is happening. It's affecting people. Yaani sasa mambo haya hausemi kwa sauti ya juu nawaambia unamwambia kwamba mambo haya nimeyasikiliza kwa kweli yanatendeka. Do you see a problem with that? Je, unaona kwamba mambo haya yakitendeka kuna tatizo maana? Now if you don't we can have some people gather together and then explain this to you more. Na sasa kama mtu huyu bado hasikilizi tutawaita watu wengine basi wakuwe mashahidi wasaidie kumweleza zaidi. And if you want to work on it that will be great. Na kama mtu huyu atakuwa tayari kushughulikia matatizo hayo ile ndio itakuwa nzuri. Lakini mtu huyu japo asipokuwa tayari kushughulikia jambo hilo. Anaweza kuleta matatizo mengi. And then if the person continue to resist. Na mtu huyu akiendelea basi akiendelea kuwa kichwa ngumu. Then we have to say. Ni lazima sasa tutasema I have to give you a warning. Sasa ni lazima basi nita if you don't change this way kama hautabadilisha njia zako hizi we cannot allow you to serve sisi basi tutakupa ruhusa ya kutumika kanisani or you sit on the sinner's bench in this church now if you have sinner's bench here in this in these places j kwenye hii nchi yetu ya Kongo kuna mahali kuna makanisa ambayo yameandaa makalio mahali pa kuketi watu ambao ni watenda dhambi so what i'm saying even when i'm rebuking I'm trying to bring hope to him when he repents. Anasema kwamba ijapokuwa atakuwa akikemea, atakuwa anakemea akimwelekeza katika njia ya toba. You know this that Paul said in 2 Corinthians. Kumbuka Paulo anasema katika Wakorinto wa pili, when this brother repents, huyu ndugu kama atatubu, then you bring him back. Huyu ndugu basi ukamregeshe that you don't want him to lose salvation. Kwa sababu usimwache apoteze wokovu. Okay. So there's a place to rebuke. So ndio kuna sehemu ya kukemea. But we still want to do it with love and gentleness. Lakini katika kukemea huku kwetu tukemee katika upole na upendo and give hope. Na tupeane tumaini that when you repent there will be a good future. 
ya kwamba unapotupu utakuwa na siku za usoni nzuri kiongozi he wants to know if a leader tu njoo kama pasha aonya ama so nitaka nijue kama kiongozi tu njoo ana pasha aonya ama ama mwingine mtu basi kiongozi tu njoo anaweza aonya mtu ama mwingine mtumishi he is asking Na, as a leader is it just it is support it is the work of the leader to give a warning or any other person can give a warning na kuna kiongozi mwingine anaweza kuonya mtumishi mtumishi anamsikia lakini mtumishi akiona kosa ya kiongozi akimwita kiongozi anamwongelesha kwa upole kiongozi hakumsikia yeye lakini ile mambo anaenda yongea kanisani Jumapili na nasema hii kanisa ni yangu hakuna mtu tulianza naye ukaendelea na kufukuza na ulikuwa kasuri lipata kai vision unaweza fanya je na ule kiongozi unampenda aha there is this situation whereby this is a leader of the church and he has done a mistake and now some other leaders they have approached him in a gentle way then what that pastor will do when he comes to the church on sunday when he starts preaching he will say this is my church i started it and nobody really helped me to start this church so you can never say anything towards me so what can we do okay now first answer the first first question is atajibu swali la kwanza all Christians have the responsibility to you know to guide to lead people to repentance and to rebuke when it comes to their points wa kristo wote wako na majukumu ya kuele kupeana mwelekeo ya kutoa maoni yao ya kuongea mambo yao yasikike but when it comes to a a case in a church that he should bring it to the pastor after his first encounter first face to face with one person and then if he doesn't listen then we tell the pastor to handle it from there na kama kuna tatizo kati ya wakristo wewe ambaye uliokosa na yule mkosewa basi mkutane wawili mzungumze kama mambo hayo hayataeleweka vizuri ukalete mambo hayo sasa mbele ya mchungaji ili usaidizi ufanye nini uanzie kutoka hapo okay now when it comes to the point when there is a pastor who has problems na sasa inafika mahali ambapo yule mchungaji ndio ana matatizo it depends on the problem inategemea huyo mchungaji amefanya makosa yapi if it's a, a problem of style a style like you know some people are more energetic some people are more stern you know there are different styles basi kunaweza kuwa kuna makosa ambayo eh, inaweza tokelezea kwamba watu wengine wana nguvu zaidi wengine ni wadhaifu wengine wako na talanta mbalimbali wako na vipawa tofauti za mchungaji we don't have to change the style of person basi tusije tukabadilisha aha uh-huh, ule mfumo wa huyo mtu we only have to face a problem if it involves sin ni lazima shida ambayo lazima sisi inafaa tuitazame vizuri ni ile tatizo ambayo inahusisha dhambi and hurting people na hiyo dhambi inaathiri ama inaleta matatizo kwa watu wengine now if this pastor continue to hurt people or continue to sin in church kama huyo mchungaji ataendelea kuumiza watu na kuleta dhambi kanisani. The Bible tells us to discern the false prophets. The discern the false prophets. Aha. Biblia inatuambia kwamba tuwe na roho ya utafsiri ya kupambanua tujue kwamba kuna manabii wa uongo. You know there could be pastors who are false prophets. Unajua kunaweza kuwa na wachungaji ambao ni wachungaji wa uongo. So then the members and the elders have the responsibility to talk to the pastor. Kwa hivyo eh, washirika wa kanisa na viongozi wa kanisa wako na majukumu ya kumuongelesha yule mtungaji. But I want to say this you really have to discern if this is something that you need to confront or is it just a style problem, you know. Sasa ni lazima pia uelewe je hili tatizo ambalo ni tatizo am, hili tatizo ambalo tunalo ni tatizo ambalo tunaweza kulishughulikia ama ni tatizo tu la kimfumo and on the other hand a pastor should also be humble a pastor should also be humble na pia wewe kama mchungaji lazima uwe mchungaji wa kujinyekea a pastor who started church doesn't mean that he is nobody can 
you know, approach him about any problem. Sio kwamba kwa sababu wewe ndiye mchungaji mwanzilishi wa ile kanisa unapofanya makosa kwamba hauna ruhusa ama mtu yeyote hana ruhusa ya kukuja kukuambia kwamba jamani hili ni tatizo. Now Paul talk about he reproach Peter. Paulo anazungumza mambo haya anapomkemea Petero. So even Peter was reproached. Ona hata Petero mwenyewe yeye alikemewa. Okay. Tunashukuru sana kwa maelekezo na kupatia kama vile viongozi wa kanisa. We are very happy for the guidance you are giving us as the church leaders. Ila katika Wakorinto wa kwanza sura ya 5 in 1 Corinthians chapter number 5 mstari wa 4 hadi wa 5 and verses 4 to 5 ningependelea mwenyewe uisome utafasilie namna gani tunaweza itia kwa maana he is requesting that you read that scripture and help them to understand that scripture wewe mwenyewe tunaweza itia namna gani kwa matendo ndani ya kanisa how do we do this in the church yes that's about when someone has committed some serious sin hiyo inahusisha kama mtu ametenda dhambi ambazo zinahusishwa sasa hivi. That's similar to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 18. Ndio ndicho kile kinachofanana na kile ambacho Yesu anasema katika kitabu cha Mathayo sura ya 18. When someone has sinned first we approach them one to one. Ya kwamba mtu unapo anapotenda dhambi waje tuende yule mkosoa na mkosa wa wazungumze wawili. Then if he doesn't listen then a few people come to him. Kama basi hawezi kusikiliza wacha watu wengine kama wawili wamwendee. And then if he doesn't listen the whole church approach him. Na kama hata hawezi kusikiliza basi kanisa lote likaingilie jambo hili. If he doesn't listen then he is uh, excommunicated from the church. Na kama mtu huyo hawezi kusikiliza sauti ya kanisa nzima huyo mtu anaweza sasa amepewa ruhusa kufukuzwa kanisani. Now there I heard in Africa there is a way to handle it is the sinner's bench. Ah ana kuna anasema kwamba katika Afrika kuna njia ambazo za kushukulikia jambo hilo kuna kuna ile benchi ya watenda dhambi. The person can still come to hear the word of God but he cannot participate in the church activities. Yaani mtu huyu kama amekwisha kutengwa kanisani anaweza kuja kanisani kusikia tu injili lakini yeye hana ruhusa ya kufanya matendo mengine kanisani. That he doesn't have the right of a member of the church. Ya kwamba huyo mtu bado hana sasa uh, ha, hayuko rasmi mshirika wa lile kanisa. So when it comes to a point when the person refuses refuses to repent then there is a point that he cannot be a member anymore. Sasa kama huyo mtu anafika sehemu ambayo hawezi kusikiliza amekushindwa kusikiliza na kanisa nzima huyo mtu amepewa ruhusa ya kufukuzwa kanisani but when the person repents then we can still accept him lakini mtu huyu kama atatubu ajue kwamba alitenda dhambi ajenyekee na atubu tunamrengesha kanisani have i answered the question 